Thank you very much for taking the time today to view our video. Before we begin, we'd like to take a moment to introduce ourselves. There are many aspects to 9.connect, but it boils down to the fact that we're a PCB-centric organization. We believe and focus on the PCB due to the fact that it is truly the center point of all electronic design. That's where our expertise lies. We provide services not only in the PCB layout, but in design consulting as well. And during the technical portion of this webinar, you will see this expertise in motion. We are now the exclusive North American instructors for Altium Designer. We host 100 trainings throughout the year across North America, and we are excited to bring these trainings closer to you. In addition to our services, we are also a value-added reseller for a number of PCB-related software companies. And just to note, each company has been presented in past webinars. So if you're interested in them, please contact us or check out our website. And by the way, we provide one-on-one -on -one coaching for these tools as well. For more information on our services and past webinars, please contact us. Our information is listed in the description below. Thank you for giving us a moment of your time, and please enjoy the presentation. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. This is a video on how to install Altium Designer 15. What I have up on my screen right now are the two sites that Altium has available for Altium itself. There is live.altium.com, and this is what I will call the engineering website because most of this has to do with those people who've already purchased Altium and are looking for some type of support, uh, such as the forums or the tech docs. Or if, you're in, if you are new to Altium, you can always go to www.altium.com. Now in the past, www.altium.com and live.altium.com were rather different. Though what they've done recently with this whole new website changeover is the fact that the ribbons are the exact same now. So the ribbon that you see up here is the exact same that you'll see over here at live.altium.com. So you can access the download information on either website. Now, in the past, if you're used to Altium's old website, the easiest thing to do was to scroll down to the bottom and to simply click on where it said download. And what they have changed since the last website update is that they no longer provide that down here. They actually want you to go through the ribbon in order to get to the download site. So I'm going to go under products. And you'll notice under products, it's rather different from what you may have seen in the past with Altium. So let's take a look over here to how do we do the download. Well, actually, if I click on Altium Designer 15 over here, it's only going to provide me more information. And if you want to go through this, you certainly can, but it's not going to get you to where you need to go. Okay, I'll just bring this up here and you can take a look. So it's just showing you all the capabilities of Altium Designer, you know, their marketing type of stuff that you would expect on their site. So let's go back over to products. And I'm going to click over here to where it says downloads. All right, now you'll notice that this got cleaned up from the old website. In the past, a lot of things were provided on this particular page. They would have had links to tasking. They would have had links to a dashboard. They would have had links, obvious, to Altium Designer and several versions of Altium Designer. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, which one do I need to download? Let me talk about these other two here for a moment, and then we'll push more on to Altium Designer itself. Now, Altium Vault is another product that Altium sells, which is specific to design management. It is uh, used for not only components, but also for documentation. So they are using a version control system to handle all of your documents. Now, in the past, Altium did provide something that was called a personal vault. A personal vault could be used by one person. It was primarily put out there by Altium so people could kind of kick the tires and get a better feel for the vault. That personal vault has long been removed by Altium. I think it's been about two years now. So if you do have an old copy of the personal vault, uh, I'm just going to forewarn you that it will not work on the newer versions of Altium. And if you do try to seek a personal vault, Altium no longer has it. If you have purchased the vault, and you'll definitely know because this is not a trivial purchase, then at that point you can download this and install it accordingly. However, for most companies, if you have purchased a vault, it's really going to be your IT folks 
who are going to have to install this since it has to go onto the company server. For the individual users, I wouldn't worry about trying to download or install the Altium Vault, especially if you don't have a license for it. The second option over here is the private license server. And the private license server is part of the different types of licenses that you can purchase from Altium. Altium has three different license types. They have the traditional standalone. This is a license that you purchase. It is an encrypted file. It's a .alf file. That's the extension ALF, which stands for Altium license file. You put that onto your machine and you're good to go. Now, many people offer what's called the on-demand license. And the on-demand license allows you to use the licenses as necessary, depending on which machine you may be on, as long as it has Altium. In order to access that, you actually have to sign in using your support account. And once you sign in, your company information will appear. In fact, I'll demonstrate this a little bit later on. And then from there, you can pick whatever licenses are available to you. But you have to have an internet connection in order to use it. There is a roaming feature, and that will allow a temporary license to be put onto your machine and you can determine the number of days that you wish to have that license for. And then you can also return the license earlier if you return back to your work environment and no longer need to have a roaming license. The last one is this private server license. And the private server used to be called the floating license. They removed that name because it was becoming too confusing with the on-demand concept. But a private license server is the idea of having this tool on your server that would have all of the software licenses that you've purchased. So rather than having your machines go out to Altium to uh, make connectivity and connection for your license information, instead it would make connectivity to the private server license that's sitting on your own network. It is very limited right now. They do not allow for roaming licenses there. So this is for organizations that want to have very tight control over their licenses. It may also be for situations such as the military where you're in a lab or you're in an environment where your machines cannot make access to the outside world. So that's why the private license server will be used. If you're going to download this, it more than likely means that you're a part of the IT group. It's not something you'd normally put on your own machine. So these two over here are really for the IT folks. Now let's talk about Altium Designer here. So this is the tool that you want to download. Altium gives you the option of downloading the latest and greatest. So here's 15.015 .015 of the time of this recording. Then I can also download versions prior to Altium Designer 15. And what I'm going to do at this point is I am going to download the latest version. So I'm going to click on this here and to, to determine that this is the one I'm going to download and I'm going to execute it. And so now it's going to ask me to download this and I'm going to press save. And what this is allowing Altium to do is rather than trying to just download two or three gigs of an entire software package, what this allows Altium to do is to start a communication between your machine and Altium so that if there's any interruptions, it can resume again after the interruption has been resolved. Where in the past, if you downloaded something that large and there was an interruption, you would not be able to recover. That's why I call this really a beacon program. It installs onto your machine. It's going to ask you a series of questions. And once those questions are answered, then Altium is going to install. All right, now we have our splash screen set up over here. We're going to press next to continue. And I am going to keep the language in English here. I'm going to have to accept the agreement. Now, if it's not selected already, you will have to select this in order for the next to light up over here. And this is the end user license agreement, also known as the EULA. So feel free to read through that because that's the terms and conditions of your license. We'll press next over here. So now we have to select the design functionality. Now, of course, most of us have probably have decided to install Altium Designer because we want the PCB design capabilities. There's a couple of other things here that may be of use to you. So number one, there is this thing called the platform extensions. And I recommend you enable this so that if there's a third party tool that has been created that works with Altium Designer, such as the ICD tool or the Octopart tool or the WebBench tool, and there's many others, then you can ensure that those will be installed because you have the platform extensions to be able to do that. There's also the suppliers. So Altium has a wonderful tool called the supplier panel. And the supplier panel is really useful in finding components that you can add information to from these suppliers, such as New Worker, Mauser, and uh, DigiKey. There's many others too, and I apologize for not having the whole list immediately in front of me. But in order for you to get that information, you need to have this enabled. 
There's also the FPGA capabilities in Altium, and it's actually pretty extensive. So if you want to have that capability to take a look at it, you can. Now, don't confuse the FPGA design capabilities with the PCB ones. The PCB is just that. It's about going from point A to point B, whereas the FPGA design capability is the inner workings of the FPGA itself. Uh, you will have to download the engines for the FPGA tool that you're using. So Altium itself, for example, just because it may have information for a Xilinx or for an Altera FPGA, it doesn't mean that it can completely compile it. You still have to have the Xilinx engine, the ISE engine, or software on your machine, or for Altera, you need to have the Cordis engine or software on your machine in order for Altium to actually do the place and route and to create the bit file or JEDEC file, whatever file you're trying to create. The importers and exporters, I would also leave this on as well. These are good to bring in and just because there may come a point in time where you do get a file that you're going to have to translate. And the last one is the touch sensor support. These are a collection of different types of PCB patterns that are very useful if you are doing what they call touch sensor support. These are the ability to have capacitive touch and other capabilities that don't require some type of button, but you do have to know how to set up the PCB so that when you put a human hand towards that device, it will respond accordingly. All right, so we're gonna press next over here. This is where the program files are going to be located and this is where the shared documents are gonna be located. So in the past, our team used to put everything under the program files directory in the operating system with the advent of Windows Vista, the UIC or the user access control made it very difficult to get to files and examples within the program files directory. So what Altium did was they said, all right, the setup files will be under the program files directory and the shared documents will be put in another directory altogether that are very accessible. If you have another version of Altium on your machine, you may leave it there. Notice that it is putting in the subdirectory of Altium Designer 15. So I do have Altium Designer 14 on here. This will have no impact on Altium Designer 14. All right, from there, we just press Next. And now it's letting me know that it is ready to go. And that's what I'll do. Okay, it looks like the installation has completed. So at this point, I'm going to click on Finish. And I'm going to allow it to run Altium Designer, see what we got over here. So I did get this over here. I'm going to allow Access. There is this import settings feature that generally comes up. This is asking if, they, if I want to use the DXP preferences from the last version. I am not a big fan of this. It seems as though Altium is constantly changing their setups, and it's caused issues in the past, at least when I was doing support for them. If they fixed it, I'm not aware of it, but I don't recommend it. If you are going to do this, I would recommend that you basically take a copy of your file, which you can do on your own anyways. You go into Altium, you go into DXP Preferences, and then you can save it old version. You can load it into the new version on your own. I'm not going to let this do it on its own, so I'm going to cancel here. Now, this showed up on my other screen over here. I'll try to pull everything up. Here's a warning that you're going to see. And you can turn it off saying, don't show this message anymore. And it says, parallel port driver is not supported in 64-bit uh, windows. So what's the deal with this? This is very archaic, actually. So Altium in the old days had a feature called the NanoBoard. Now, you probably have heard of the NanoBoard 3000 and the NanoBoard 2. There was something called the NanoBoard 1. And the NanoBoard 1 actually ran through a parallel port. Through the years, the parallel port has disappeared. I think it's been gone for about 10 years now. So there's no more support for parallel port in the Microsoft operating system. Now, if you want to, you can always have a parallel port put into your machine, but they have to basically add a card in there, and it's got to do some tricks with the operating system so that the operating system treats it like a parallel port. So that's why they're warning you of this. If you don't care because you don't have a nano board, then don't worry about it. And I'm just going to say, don't show this message anymore and press OK. All right, so that's been turned off. I'm going to now drag up my screen over here so that you can see it. We'll go full screen over here. So I do have 15.0 in here. The first thing I need to do is make sure I sign in. So that's going to be the default page. If it doesn't come up with this for some reason, you'll go into File, and you can go into the My Accounts page here, and it will bring up the same thing. You can also use, if it's visible over here, there's a little icon up here that says go to home page. And the home page will take you here. And you'll notice that 
over time, Altium has changed what the home page looks like. So you can get all these different tabs over here. The one you want to be in is admin because that's where you're going to be able to do this. So I'm going to click and sign in. I've got to log in at this point. Okay. And I am going to let it remember it. And I'm going to tell it to sign me in when I start Altium Designer. And it's just forewarning me that, hey, in order to get this license, you've got to go over the internet. So I'm understanding that warning and I'm gonna press here. I already talked a little bit about the licenses. I think it's important to talk about this again here, just to make sure you understand where the licenses come on in. If you do have on-demand licenses by you logging in, you will see all those licenses that are made available to you, what the seat counts are, and if someone else is using them. So if I wanna grab one, I can say, okay, I want this one over here, and I'll say use, okay? And now it went back, it pinged the server, and it's updated, it says used by me. If I, was, if I was on here and someone else was using it, I'd see their name here. There's also a number of different standalone licenses that we have here. These would just be downloaded and put onto your machine. If you already have one, then you would just say click on Add Standalone License File. And from there, it would open up a file open and you would navigate to the directory and you look for .alf file. You can also set up the private server license as well again you would have to download that and install it first there's a whole set of different requirements for that i'm not going to go into that but just let you know that if you were doing a private server license here or if your company's doing it, you'd have to click on reconnect to private server license or set up private license server so that you can get gain access to those licenses once you've got your license set up you're good to go at this point one thing i do like about altium is that it's very forgiving in the sense that if you, for some reason, lose the license, don't close Altium out. It's going to forewarn you that the license has been lost, and it'll give you an opportunity to save before the license is removed. However, if you regain the license, then Altium will allow you to proceed. There are some tools out there where once you've lost the license, it throws in demo mode, and you're just up the creek. So just wanted to uh, give you a heads up on that. So this tool is ready to go at this point. I can open up any files and I can continue to do what I was doing in the past. That's the installation for Altium Designer 15. I hope you found this useful and have a wonderful day.